Hey guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. It's good to see you. Thanks for popping by and saying hello. If you're excited about this video, and I know you are because you're here, then why not hit the like button to let me know and we're going to get into editing in Final Cut Pro using the Sensil Morph. Okay, so let's get started by looking at the actual overlay. Now, this is the video editing overlay and it is designed primarily for Premiere Pro. But if you're a Final Cut user like me, you can just go into the Sensil app and just make a few tweaks to the functions so that it works just as well in Final Cut Pro. And what's even better for you guys is that I've saved you the time and effort of having to do that by mapping as much of the functions as I possibly can to it. So let's have a look. Right, along the top, you've got your usual function commands. You've got save, undo, redo, import, um, start a new project, import source material. And then these next four buttons, in the interest of full transparency, I don't really have them assigned to do anything yet. So program, timeline, effect control, expand. At the moment, I haven't assigned to do anything. Um, I might find a use for them later on in the future. So we'll, if, if I do, I'll update this and let you know about it. The tab button is really cool because it just lets you tab through the different zones of Final Cut Pro. So the um, kind of import browser the angle view and the timeline as well and the effects browser um, that's really handy ripple delete and delete all work as you'd expect now on the left hand side here you've got a kind of like a number pad style situation with most of your main kind of like controls that you like to do that normally you'd have to like spend a lot of time just learning key command shortcuts for and if you don't want to have to learn how to do key command shortcuts then this is going to save you a lot of time so you've got insert a clip overwrite a clip you can make a marker on your timeline ripple left add an edit in between two clips ripple right you've got your pen tool your razor tool your selection tool Def trans and F select at the moment I don't have doing anything um, and then rate I've actually got is the range selector tool so that's the way I've set this up for me and then just below here you've also got slip slide nudge and then you've got your option or control if you're on a windows shift and command or alt again if you're on a windows so that's kind of like the left hand side of the layer now moving over into the middle, this is where it really gets interesting I think. If you are working with a big timeline, this is going to be really handy for you I believe. So right in the middle is your jog wheel, that's really great, that's nice and simple. To the left and right immediately of the jog wheel is your fast forward and rewind buttons. Now what's really cool about these is that because the Sensor Morph has MPE technology built into it, it allows you to really use velocity and sensitivity to kind of like maximize on things like that. So basically, the kind of like harder you push, the quicker it'll skim through your timeline, forwards or backwards, depending on the button. And then the softer you push, the slower it'll skim through your timeline. So if you just want to skim through a couple of frames at a time, then you just lightly tap it and it'll just kind of like gently just have a little walk through. And then if you really want to scrub through nice and quickly and get to a, a specific point, then you can just smash it right down and it'll go whoop right to a certain point as soon as you take it off. And that's really cool. That's nice and handy. Now, just below here, you've got in and out um, and they allow you to set in and out points for when you are importing clips in from your kind of like asset pool into an actual project timeline and then once again select and deselect allows you to select those clips within your project pool or your asset pool sorry on the left hand side here is a video slider this at the moment is allowing me to zoom in and out of my timeline um, I was a little bit gutted that the navigate bar isn't letting me do that. And it might just be something that I haven't quite figured out yet. So if any of you out there know how to do that, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know. That would be super awesome. Um, as I said, once again, this zoom and audio slider, I don't have kind of specific functions for at the moment. If I find a use for them later on, then I'll let you know. 
on the top here, the home button takes you right back to the start of your project timeline, which is really useful, and the end button takes you to the end of the timeline as well. So really useful triggers here that are just right at the kind of like tip of your fingertips. And that sounds well cheesy, but it is, it's really good. Um, and then just to finish off here, we've got our normal number pad and then volume down, volume up and arrow keys as well. There we go. So we're going to dive into Final Cut Pro now and I'm going to show you how I edited um, a live loop and performance video that I did a few weeks ago. Um, it was a few weeks ago now, but I want to show you how I kind of like put that all together in a really quick way and how I used, literally used the Sentil Morph to make it happen as well. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm in Final Cut Pro now and I am going to use the Sensil Morph just to import some media into my asset pool here. So I'm just going to go Command and Source and then I'm going to navigate to my desktop, Morph Jam and I'm just going to grab these four files and I'm going to import them. So that's all done, that's imported, happy days. And then I'm just gonna take this and turn it into a multicam clip because I wanna deal with this as one kind of like main clip that I edit on a really quick basis. So I'm gonna select all and then hit new multicam clip. And let's just call it Sensil Edit Multi Cam. <laughs> okay, now that we've got our Sensor multicam clip on the go. I'm just going to do command and project to make myself a new project and I'm just going to call it Sensor Edit Video. Okay, and then I'm just going to select that clip and then I'm literally just going to press insert to insert it right on the timeline. Now that we've got our little clip here, as you can see using the jog wheel, I can scroll through my timeline tiny frame by tiny frame or if i want to use the fast forward buttons i can skim through at moderate pace or pressing even harder i can really fast forward through and that's the end of my timeline so you can see how quickly you can kind of get around and then using this video slider I can zoom in or out and I can go right to the end of my project I can skim back because that's kind of right where I want it to end and in fact I'm just going to press that blade tool I'm going to select that blade tool and I'm just going to click that there back to my selection tool and I'm just going to delete that clip done so Let's go back to the start of my project and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here because there's a little bit of stuff that I want to get rid of as well at the start where things I might keep that there and I'm going to lay that. Okay, and now we've got rid of that. What's going to be really useful just now is because I've got a multicam clip, I'm going to use the number pad to just edit on the fly really quickly my entire project because this is kind of like a one clip live looping situation and I'm not inserting any other like b-roll clips or anything like that so I've already brought up my viewer angle um, selection and I've just made sure that the audio is always going to be this morph audio and then that I'm only actually editing the video stuff. So on my number pad, angle one is the Canon 80D. Angle two is the audio, which we're not gonna to be touching at all. Angle three is my screen record, and angle four is my GoPro. So I wanna start this video off with my main camera view. So I'm just gonna hit play. And we're gonna walk through this.
FYI, this was the very first live looping performance I ever did um, using Ableton. And I didn't know that in Ableton you can auto quantize when you're doing live looping performances. So this is me actually going in and editing the MIDI notes as it's happening. But here we are, look, changing over the overlays. And what's really cool here is that it's automatically switching MIDI channel. And this is a uh, drum bank from Battery, Native Instruments. You see, I just added in a couple of extra notes there because I missed them in the first round. Now I'm choosing the Bukla Thunder overlay. Love this thing. And that is a patch from Analog Lab that I found. I can't remember the name of it just now. If I can find it, I'll put it in the screen. So just once again, tightening up my audio. And here we are in the drums. This time I'm in the contact player here. I'm using a drum kit that you get when you buy Native Instruments Complete 12. And I have to say, I was really surprised with the responsiveness of those pads, especially when using sticks. Now this last overlay is what's really cool. Get that front angle for a bit. So with this last overlay here, I actually, um, it's the innovators overlay and it allows you to just kind of turn it into anything you want to turn it into. So I basically made it a four channel fader and then two sliders for effects controls and then mutes and my start and stop as well. And there we are. So I'm going to press play pause there. And at that point, I'm probably going to just hit the blade tool. And then I'll probably just delete that. And add a little fade to color transition there at the end there. So let's just check that fade out. Yeah, there we go. So um, that's a really simple way of using the Sensor Morph in trust me when I say it, there are much more in-depth things that you can be doing with this you can really use this to enhance your workflow in a massive way it's so cool but that gives you an insight into how I've been using it recently I've been using this to edit a lot of my tutorial videos that I'm doing with a company that I work for called Rock Choir and I'm also using it more and more every day to make backing tracks in Logic Pro and do guide tracks and all kinds of really fun things that I'm hoping to showcase a little bit more in this channel but guys I really hope you've enjoyed this today I hope it's been useful for you please let me know in the comments below tell me what you think about it if you think it's a gimmick fair dues just let me know i honestly believe this is a really powerful tool that can enhance your workflow especially if you are a traveling musician who's having to edit their own video as well guys hit the like button if you enjoyed this video it really helps out my channel it helps push it further up the algorithm and get seen by more people if you're liking what I'm doing please subscribe and hit the notification bell because it really means a lot to me that some of you are out there watching these videos and just getting involved and having a bit of fun with it let me know what other tools you use to edit video in as well and whether you're using Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro but for now that's going to be it for me look forward for more videos coming up soon i've got some keyboard reviews coming up soon i've got some in-ear monitoring technology that i'm looking to review and get involved with as well there's a lot of really fun things happening on the channel and it means a lot to me that you're watching i know i'm repeating myself but hey there we go guys until the next video we'll see you